Welcome to Skill Based Art, a learning resource for art students and artist teachers. My name is Emilio Longo and I'm the founder and director of Skill Based Art. Today I would like to welcome you to Dyke Falls here in Abbotsford where the Victorian Art Society are having one of their monthly paint outs. I'm joined by John Hurl who is the VAS paint outs coordinator. John, thanks very much for inviting me today. Appreciate Thank being here. No worries. So, Great. So, John, can you tell me a little bit about the uh, history of the VAS paint outs and how it all got started? Sure. Um, well, there was, uh, there's always been uh, sort of a cultural, culture and history of uh, outdoor painting with the Victorian Art Society, going right back to the founding uh, members. Uh, but there was, to my knowledge, there was, uh, it wasn't so much structured and organised as part of the VAS event. Some, some years ago when the uh, former president of the Victorian Art Society, Greg Smith, decided to, uh, to create a calendar of paint out events for members, yeah. uh, to, uh, mainly to foster and to keep going the tradition of that book painting that was so much a part of the Victorian Art Society sure. in the earlier days. Um, Greg, uh, began that uh, program off and basically uh, ran, ran those programs for 26 years roughly wow, yeah. uh, before I took over from him yeah. he came off uh, council. Of course he was president uh, in the last few years that he was on council yeah. um, and uh, so he handed that off to me and I've been coordinating that since then. Fantastic. So what year did you take over? Oh, it was uh, probably roughly six years ago, I think. About probably. six years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So Greg maintained it for 26 years. 26 years. That's quite an achievement. It was, yeah. So that's yeah. Greg Gregory R. Smith, the uh, oil painter. He teaches that's at right. um, Strathmore, right? He's got a, yes. a school there, the Gregory R. That's Smith right. School of uh, yeah. Oil Painting. That's right. And he, uh, he trains students outside the Uniting Church, I believe, there. Yeah. He's got the hall that he hires. That's right. Fantastic. Yeah, and he, he teaches, he's teached, uh, taught for years at, at the VAS. That's that, yeah, he does a summer. He summer does, uh, and he does uh, Thursdays there. I think he's got three classes on Thursday yeah. in the studio there. So, Fantastic. Yeah, he's very active. Great. He's, he's committed so much of his time and energy to the Victorian Arts Society. It's yeah, he's amazing. Amazing yeah. painter, amazing yeah. guy. Yeah. So, John, with the, uh, the paint outs, so they're every month, so you get 12 in a year. Uh, we do, we do, uh, let me think, we do nine monthly paint outs, but, and then two, two uh, so there's one that uh, usually the last Sunday of each month, uh, from January to, uh, to November, mm -hmm. and then there's two, two of those months we do uh, a four day trip away somewhere, you know, like for example, Queen to Beechworth, and, yeah. uh, in the lock, Sure. So how do you usually find the locations for where you want to go? Um, well, initially when I first took over I was drawing a lot on the locations that Greg had found. Sure. Um, and I just started introducing some of my own ideas. Yeah. In, uh, look, just, just pouring over maps really and then going out for a drive and and sort of uh, looking at areas and deciding if they'd work well for a paint out or not. Sure. And uh, just, uh, yeah, just, just sort of putting together a, a list over the years of places right. that seem to offer a variety of yeah. subjects. We try to have, uh, you know, rural scenes, rural areas. We try to have areas like, in yeah, close to the city, but, but still, you know, aesthetically. Some industrial sort of landscapes, yeah. um, port uh, locations, and things like that. So we we try to get a, a, a mix across, yeah. across you know, the, of the year, sure. sort, of, sort of suit something to suit most people. You know, yeah, yeah, and, and that's one thing I've noticed as well when I've um, when I've followed the vast paint outs. It's great to see in the paintings that you have some of them natural landscape but then you have some of the urban landscape yeah buildings yeah, man-made right. structures yeah, cityscapes exactly. and such well that's it's a nice right. combination yeah, yeah. And, it, and and the thing is with the with the painting associated with the right back i mean 
you go back to uh, you know, the cabin and the street yeah. and, and uh, the tonalists uh, as well. And uh, their work was, you know, a lot of their work was produced as a mixture of the urban and the uh, as well as the country of the urban area. So yeah. we try to keep that same balance. The urban environment is much different to what it was then, but it's still, yeah, absolutely. It's still interesting to record it. Sure. Yeah. So with that, uh, in regards to the overall history of the VAS, uh, John, so we know that the VAS started about 1870, it was established, and they've got the studio at the back there where the likes of Tom Roberts, Frederick McCubbin, yeah. Arthur Street, and they all gathered there and painted. Yeah. So from its inception, was the paint that's part of the overall vision of VAS? Or did oh, come later? I think, no, well, I think probably was just the nature of the, the artists who sort of started the Victorian Art Society or the films that it really was in the early days. Uh, I think that the plein air painting was, was uh, such a, a strong um, influence to them anyway. So uh, it, it was, you know, we all know the sort of bodywork school. Yeah. Uh, that era and uh, the painting on location was, was very uh, strong uh, influence and practice by them. So naturally, uh, as they were the founders of the society, I think that tradition yeah. was automatically part of the Victorian Art Society, sure. uh, as, along with the studio work and the, the, the teaching uh, sure. still life and portraiture and all that sort of stuff. So, I think it was just that, um, as, as I understand it, I, I believe that there was, there's always been groups of Victorian Art Society members who have painted outdoors, yeah. but it was almost uh, not, uh, it was something that was not necessarily part of the, the format of the site. Okay. But it was, I think, well, I know Greg, uh, when he, started the calendar of paint outs specifically his reason as he said to me was that um, he felt that, that the traditional link to the VAS painting, painting was, was being lost. Yeah. There was a lot of emphasis on studio work, um, painting from life but, but in a studio setting uh, and he had felt that that really important element of paint out which sure. had been so strong in VAS earlier, uh, was getting lost. There were a lot of members who weren't actually taking part in that process. Yeah. And he felt it was important to bring them together through the VAS in, in an organised structure, sure. organised method to, to get them out of the studio. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So the VAS works on membership, uh, yeah. John. So to come to one of the paint outs, uh, do you have to be a VAS member? Yes, yes. It is a member's uh, benefit. Yeah. So you're, it's, it's, there's no extra fee involved in coming to a paint out. Your membership fee covers your, um, the accessibility to the paint. Fantastic. So, yeah. That's great. And how about if visitors just want to come one one Sunday and check out what you guys are up to? Well, yeah, we we I've been quite happy to. Greg also used to uh, have people who were members come along to one or two, usually by invitation from from an existing member. They would ask along a friend of theirs to yeah. come and sort of join in. Um, we we you know we 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 like the the interaction and networking with other people too. It's yeah. important that we we have contact with other people who aren't members, they may be members of other societies. Um, hopefully some of those people will decide to join sure. um, and then continue with the plan out. So although it is a member's activity, uh, it's a social activity. So sure. you know it doesn't necessarily totally exclude many members but we do have to be mindful that the members um, pay their fee for yeah. the for the right to come and join in with us. Yeah, so absolutely. We've got to keep that, that balance. Well, that supports a society yeah, exactly. in return as well. Yeah, that's that's right. fantastic.
Yeah, so it's interesting just walking around John and observing mm. the, the painters uh, working from life, working on plain air, just mm. like they did back in the yeah. 19th century, early 20th century. Yeah. And it's um, such a great thing because it also, through observing the paintings, you really get a sense that the artists are trying to capture the kind of reverie of the land as well. And this idea, I mean, when we think about our times now, you know, a lot of it's based on technology and being plugged in, this plugged yeah. in society. Being able to step away from that, just take the time to really just surrender to nature yeah, yeah, and see absolutely. all the beautiful line, shape, yeah. colour, right. harmonies that are in that. Yeah. It's uh, think, really uh, healthy. Yeah. yeah, I think that's one of the great things about it, is you really immerse yourself in the landscape. Sure. And you do it in a way that is different to if you're just, you know, sort of spending five minutes standing. You spend an entire day yeah. and you really you really see what's here. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, you experience this locality for and uh, you take away a lot more than just a quick pass. Yeah, that's right. And I think well for me, I enjoy the I enjoy the process of painting yeah. and I enjoy you know, producing something from that, which is always nice. It doesn't always happen, but it's nice when it does. But for me, at the end of the day, when I've spent the painting, what I take away is just a real uh, feeling of the landscape and time that I've spent the day in. Absolutely. And, and learned a lot about it. You, yeah. you learn something every time you have it. It's so. the painted experience, yeah, right? Exactly. It's, it's, yeah. You just take so much more in when yeah. you're actually observing it and trying yeah. to, to replicate yeah. or to take in what you see and try and uh, reorganize it on your canvas in a certain way. It's different to just looking at a photograph or just glancing at something and continuing exactly. on through every yeah, day. It's right. almost a it's form of meditation. It is, well. yeah, it is really. You become very uh, much part of the part of the environment. Sure. That you're, you're spending the day in. And, and the thing is, of course, I mean, we, I think we all, you know, we all look at the Heidelberg School paintings and one of the things, even if we don't realize it straight away, the thing that I think draws most people to them is that they are so authentic. Absolutely. The, the feeling you get of the landscape. And my, my opinion is that the, those painters and the painters since then and, and before then as well to some extent, um, they achieve that primarily because they spend that time in the landscape. Absolutely. You know, they, they are able to translate their experience onto the canvas sure. in a way that's different from just reproducing it in a studio. It's, you know, it's, it's sort of, uh, and I think that it's intangible almost. Uh, yeah, it, intangible in the sense that it's hard to define it precisely, but there's a feeling that comes from that painting that you look at it and you say, yes, this person was, was here. They were part yeah. of this landscape and they've, they've translated it. Definitely. And they felt something. It stands well. out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Very and that's what and that's what we, you know, hopefully try to do here too for yeah. our, for our members. You know, it's uh, it's uh, the disciplines and uh, uh, concentration and everything in studio work is so essential. But it's 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 also complemented by being out in this chaotic. You know, environment in a sense, the Australian bush is very chaotic and messy, and it, it, it really, uh, it, it's a great exercise in teaching yourself to reduce, simplify, That's right. pick out what's really important, yeah. and uh, and make a, make a picture that, that describes your experience. Absolutely, That's the way you put that is very lovely, yeah. very succinct, uh, yeah. John. Now, with the different, uh, with the timetable, of different locations that you guys go mm. to, for uh, listeners or for viewers who may be watching this, how can they get a sense of where you guys are going? Where do they find the timeline? Is that the timetable? Is that on the VATS website? Or yeah. Do you email it to them? Specifically? Yeah. Two, two methods. I, I keep a what I call the uh, VAS paint out group email list. Okay. <laughs> so I've got about. Uh, I think there's probably about 70 odd of our members that I've got on my friend out list. Sure. Um, I send out via email to the group uh, a reminder each month the week before each oh, out, uh, usually with 
some information, uh, some photographs of the location, so they kind of know what to expect. Sure. They get their mind set for, right. for the kind of environment they're going to be in. Uh, and a map usually to help them find it, um, sure. that sort of thing. So I send that out to the group, but then apart from that, um, the, the VAS website is, uh, if you remember, once you've logged in to the VAS as a member, you can then access the current for the whole year. So you can see it. Sure, fantastic, great. And for listeners or viewers that are watching this, if they want to get in contact with you, what would be the best way? Uh, yeah, the best way would be by the email address, I guess. So that, that's um, vas underscore paintouts at optusnet.com.au. Great, fantastic, John. John, thanks so much for taking the opportunity to speak with me today to discuss Pleasure. the history of the VAS paintouts. I think it's a fantastic tradition that you're continuing, and I wish you the very best with it as we move forward into the future. Thank you. Thanks Thank very you. much. Good thanks very much.